delighted to welcome Joyce Carrier to our gallery. Just by looking around, I am so taken by these fanciful works of art. I, I absolutely know her spirit is delightful. So I'll let her tell us about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> first one is, uh, I call it Megan's Hands. And this is a photo taken from a photo of my daughter uh -huh. at the age of 14. And I was just really taken with her curly hair. She was laying on the floor. Oh. And uh, <clears throat> so I, I wanted to do this in um, a black and white. And the larger cording on top is called bobbin work. So uh -huh. it's, a, it's a thread that's too thick to fit through your needle. Uh -huh. So you put it in, the, wind it on the bobbin and then you actually are sewing upside down because you loosen the tension and that thread just comes right up and lays on the fabric. Wow. So that's um, where that image came from. It's and wonderful. It's, it's really a delight. Does she love it? <laughs> <laughs> I used her image so many times as she rolls around. I see. I think, but yeah. But it's, I, I, I love, if this was set up above our TV, so I um, see it all the time, and uh, it tickles it just, you. It just it is a tickle. It does tickle. <laughs> the next one. <clears throat> this is the quilt. It's called Lily. Lily is my granddaughter. Just had her eighth birthday. Uh -huh. I think she was probably about six here, and um, I just loved the pose. Um, you know, the, the photo is taken by her mother, gave me permission to use it. Uh -huh. And but that's what attracted to me is the pose, how things are put together. Um, and so I just did her. And you uh, use the fabric, the coloring, how? Yes, I try to use the fabric to inform shape. Uh -huh. So, um, or shadow. Uh -huh. And uh, so I have so much fabric that already has a um, layer of, uh, that I put a layer of fusible on it. So oh. that when it's all done, I can just fuse it all oh, together. And then I go back on top and stitch it. Oh, I see. <clears throat> This one I call Eleanor and Bramble, and the little girl was standing on the fence, and she just, you know, it was, it was a beautiful, crisp fall day, and she was just enjoying the sunshine, and the horse came up and started snuffling at her, and it was a perfect image, and uh, I just really enjoyed that, and um, one of the things I was telling you about shape inform uh -huh. well, the fabric is forming the shape and uh -huh. I like the way it does that on her cheek. Uh -huh. So this fabric is a a batik that has a, a sunflower motif on it. Oh my gosh. So I just it just gives you that curve of yes, the face. It's beautiful. And the and the eyelashes are printed fabric of birds' wings. Um his eyelashes? His eye what about the eyelashes on um, I found putting the darker ones on, you couldn't see it, so I, I cut some white. And I think they were oh. just like little spiky flower, I see. I flower see. Um, petals uh -huh. and cut them out and put those on. But you're able to get the shadow of, mm -hmm. the, of them in her eyelashes. Beautiful. This is your husband's very favorite. That's a, <laughs> That's yeah, he likes said. this one the most. Uh, and my, my quilts, I will not only use fabric, but I also use fabric paint. Uh -huh. So this bottom part is um, a, was a white piece of fabric that I just very gently painted the blues and the purples in it to give oh, it some I shadows, see. to make it feel more like snow. And when did you do this? I finished. I finished it completely just a couple months ago, but I started it in 2017, I believe it was. It took me a while uh, to um, let it percolate, you know, it yes. just, 
I tried different things, especially for the the background. I tried green grass, it, it, and it sat like that for probably a year and a half. It, and it just wasn't it. right. It, it wasn't it, right. It wasn't right. right. So this one did take me a long time to get it to just kind of finally come together. Oh, it's wonderful. What do you call it? Eleanor and Bramble. And uh, the little girl who's who I got the picture from, I didn't know the horse's name, so I had showed it to her just a few months ago, and she said, oh, "I remember that horse." And oh, so really? she gave me the name. It's like finally I got a name for my piece <laughs> too, and her name is Eleanor. Wonderful, yeah, thank you. Truly wonderful. And then this piece is um, my singing bowl. And this was created originally for the, um, inspired by the National Parks, the book that was put out by Donna DeSoto. Uh -huh. And each artist was given a, um, a, a national park to represent. Uh -huh. And the parks that I had picked were all taken. So I said, <laughs> okay, I'll do Kobuk Valley National Park in Alaska. Uh -huh. And in researching the park, I found out they have a little creature called a singing vole. And they give him that name because of the chirps and, and uh -huh. you know sounds uh -huh. that he makes. So that kind of caught my fancy right. and decided to um, put him in his environment with a his tux mm -hmm. on and his microphone and he's singing. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> wonderful. So that one traveled for about um, six years to different quilt shows with her collection. Right, right. She's uh, she's special too. Yes, definitely. He's a cutie. And here? And here, this one is, um, I call Simon Cow. <laughs> Although cows are not males, but the name fit. Yeah. Um, and this was a cow that was in the pasture behind our house and just happened to get that perfect snap that I shot that I liked. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, and there he is. And Aww. when I work, especially with animals, I always do the eyes first. Do you? Yes, Aww. and I find that the eyes just really Bring inform the whole image. And I, I just can't seem to get um, it to work if I don't do the eyes first. It's like it's dead. Interesting. So with by doing the eyes first, it just seems to pop and come alive, and it's like everything else just falls into you place. You get the spirit of the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, he's a cutie. And the fun part was um, the uh, barbed bar wire, wire was fabric that was printed to look like a wooden floor. So oh. I just cut long strips of it and it um, worked perfectly for what I needed. Again, on that white background, it really helps to make it pop too. Yes. Wonderful. It looks like he's looking at us. It does, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, this next one is called 15. Why don't you get around the other side? Okay. And I know it's an odd name for a quilt, but um, again, I had made him and I couldn't come up with a name. And I had originally gotten the original photo at the National Zoo. Oh my and they have an, a lorikeet enclosure. Uh -huh. And I had told them about this quilt that I made. So the next time we went to Nashville, uh -huh. I asked them, would you like to see my quilt? And I said, oh yes, please bring it. So I showed them t this to them and the um, young lady who worked in the lorikeet enclosure recognized the bird. And he said, that's 15. And when they first got the group of babies, they gave them all numbers. Uh -huh. And he's the only one who came to recognize his name. So he kept 15, <laughs> where the other ones all got different names, Conrad, you know, uh, Boy, things like that. But he kept his name as 15 and I thought, you know, that's perfect. So that's how he got his name. And, and, and this the is- the colors uh, are wonderful. Thank you. And this is one quilt that I actually timed myself. How long did it take me? Uh -huh. And this one took 167 hours wow. from design to finish. Wow. And if you look real closely, I have a little hidden character in this quilt. And uh, the little gecko, I used him as a little point yeah. of shadow. He was right there. Oh, sure. <laughs> or a highlight oh rather than a shadow. 
that's great. But I love looking at different fabrics and thinking, what can I do with it? What can I make it do for me? Uh -huh. And uh, that's what's so much fun. Whether it's about shadow or a line or shape or something. This is so intriguing how you did the, um, it, you know, both shades of, or corners of the fabric is just mm -hmm. delightful. Thank you. And how do you get those colors? Um, what do you, what? The greens and the vibrance, and, you know. You just buy a lot of fabric. <laughs> It's, is that it? Just yeah. melting yeah. the fabric, the yeah. right green yeah. together. Yeah. And then the background I did as a um, negative and positive uh, for the leaves and foliage that he would have been in. Sure, he just mm -hmm. jumps right out at you. Yes. And again, this little polka dot uh, you know, it's on his forehead. It's intriguing. Oh, boy. This one is also an image that I got the bird at the Nashville Zoo. Uh -huh. uh, I like the tilt of his head. Uh -huh. It really intrigued me. It's a white crested turaco. Uh -huh. And uh, those are hundreds and hundreds of little feathers that I cut out. <laughs> yes, yes. But you, you have to know exactly where to put them. <laughs> I always work with uh, a picture up next to me of what, so I'm always looking at light and shadow and, um, you know, and determining placement uh -huh. on the, uh, the quilt. And again, he would look like his eyes were telling me, I will bite you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come you too close. Stick, if you stick your finger near yeah. me, they're vibrant and alive. Well, again, it's the eye first, uh -huh. and I and you also have to put that little white spot in there um, to of course. give it life. Of course. Do you have an art degree? I uh, went to the Corcoran College of Art and Design in yeah. 2006 as an <laughs> older adult, okay. and um, I was able to get my associate's degree there. I see. Luckily, from 30 years before, all my academic classes transferred. Uh -huh. and so I only had to take one academic class, and that was an, as an art history class. Wonderful. But the rest was all playing, and it was wonderful. I had a great, great experience at the Corcoran. I can, I can imagine. And this next one is, I call Done, and it's a tongue-in-cheek tongue reference to the fact that I was so glad to be done with this thing because I put so much time and effort into it. But this uh, traveled also for quite a while with cherry wood fabrics. They do their challenge mostly yearly, maybe every two years, and this was for the Lion King. Uh -huh. And uh, it uh, traveled with them for quite a few years. And in their challenge, they would ask you to use only their fabrics. And so... Do they six, make the costumes for the Lion King? Do they, work? do they make the costumes for the Lion King production? Um, no, they don't, no, no. They would just, um, every every time they do a challenge, they come up with a different oh, idea, I and see. that was just happened to be oh, the Lion King. I see. When the Lion King was in Washington, <coughs> excuse me, they um, brought some fabric from the costumes oh. to make a baby blanket, and they said just, use the fabric but we have to have the fabric brought back to us and even scraps and wow. everything so that would be fabulous it was yeah. fabulous too oh, i like him so this he is a lion at the washington national zoo oh and uh i went and sat there at the park for two hours watching this lion uh-huh and he just would not look at me Really? So finally, he turns his head, he looks straight at me, and I prick, prick, prick. Did you? And then he just looked away, and I waited another half hour, and he never looked back. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's, that's where I got his image was in the National Zoo. And he's really like with the eyes <laughs> looking at you. Well, how about this? Okay, this, this is my collection of dogs, and. Um, this was our dog, Maya, and um, 
I started out by making this one over here first. Uh -huh. This one I just call Maya, and uh, she was, you know, a beloved dog. Uh -huh. She's now gone, but um, I just wanted to play with colors and, you know, see what I could come right. up with. And then the next one in black and white was started because of a challenge with the Waterford Quilters Guild that I belong to. Um, they wanted to do a white and black challenge with one color. They all know I love orange, so they asked me to do orange. So, and it had to be a circle. I mean, how perfect can you get, get so the, the eyes are orange? And so when I decided to make it more of a series, I wanted to play off of each previous quilt. Uh -huh. So the next one is orange because she, he had orange, she had orange eyes. eyes. Uh -huh. And then the same, this orange one has green eyes. And then uh, the green one has purple eyes, so you can see. <laughs> and then the purple one goes back to having orange eyes. <laughs> oh, they're, they're really nice. But it was a good um, practice in, in seeing how, you know, the shapes and the colors and things all come together. And with the green one, I accidentally gave him a little bit of a scowl on his one eye. Uh -huh. and, I thought, oh, I like that. And so I just had fun. They're the same, but they're different. And here I have a 3D vase. Uh, the fabric that it's encased in is all hand painted, either with fabric paints or I have also used some markers, fabric markers, which I love using. And, um, and then inside it is quilted in a product called um, Foss shape, F-O-S-S -S shape. Uh, once you steam it, it shrinks just a little bit and comes a little harder. And so it's easy for shaping uh, things. And uh, so that's how the vase itself was created with this uh, product called Foss shape. So pretty, pretty, pretty. This one I call Bandy Six and uh, has its twin over there. Uh -huh. and. I designed these for a class to teach thread painting. And this one, Bandy 3, is used as three shades of red for the, for the petals. Mm -hmm. Where this one, I had a technique of blending two colors at the same time. And so this one has six. So it's got oh. a little bit more depth than this one. But, um, but that was why I made it, was to showcase the difference between this technique that I use and just using a single thread. Wonderful. And this is my grandson, Ty. <laughs> and I took this from a, a painting class at the Corcoran where you just put shapes and colors down and then you draw over top of it. Uh -huh. So I just thought I'd give that a try with my thread painting. And uh, Wonderful. My grandson, yes. Ty. Yes. Yep. This one I call uh, Flowers in a Vase. It is one that I use for class just teaching uh, thread, thread painting. I think that there, for me, there's a difference between thread painting and free motion embroidery. So thread painting is when you are blending all your threads and colors together, uh -huh. where free motion is just drawing shapes to I quilt see. it down. And this one is called Three Under the Sea. It was also for another challenge for a local art group that I'm in. Uh -huh. And uh, I had made the sharks years ago, and so I cut them out and used them and made the whale. And, you know, just played. Yeah, fun. Yeah. And then this little one here, I call him Scissor Man. I'd done it for another art quilt group where I had just um, had to make a small sample. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just took my scissors, different scissors, and I started laying them down. So you can see it's the shape of my large shears. This is the shape of another one. This is the blades of the large it's so one. It's so fanciful. <laughs> it's so fun. My, my small, small um, clips, you know. So anyway, yeah. that's how he came about. Yes. And uh, I just wanted to play with it a little bit of... Um, free motion and you know, trying different things. Oh. Joyous, absolutely mm -hmm. joyous. And so my, my youngest, well, my granddaughter 
saw it and I was explaining to her, so she started grabbing all my scissors, you know, wanting to see, oh, match them the up. Shades and everything. Yeah. And this one is, I call Blue Flower Garden. It was just a, a um, challenge for myself to thread paint, but not be perfect, to kind of um, thread, draw outside the lines uh -huh. or whatever. So the shapes don't actually fit the spaces of the, the petals just kind of informs that color. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so I enjoyed my that challenge. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Well, do you have something to say about that last one or well this one was yeah. the same as it's the other one. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I could I put see. that kind of yeah, I just see. like Bandy three and I, I gave it its na their names from a friend who I was teaching a class and she didn't do what the instructor said. She mm -hmm. wanted to do her own. <laughs> oh, and I loved it. So I said, can I do what you did? And uh, she gave me permission. It was just mainly the design of, you know, the two lines coming down, the shapes. And, but that's, uh, that's how that one Well, came about. this is a joy. Thank and you. I can tell your family is a joy too. So <laughs> they're, they're all supportive, so supportive of you. You'll be here how long? Uh, till November 5th. November 5th. So come and see what's in this fabulous collection. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.